So I feel very happy to invite Dr. Rasanjit Panda, Assistant Professor, Department of English and Foreign Languages, Guru Gashitas University, Vishwavidyalaya, Blashapur, Chattikas, India. Welcome you, sir. I request you to take over the session. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am, for uh, giving me the opportunity and uh, uh, you know to um. I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, start the new session, the technical session. Uh, hopefully, I'll be getting some of the brilliant uh, presentations from the uh, researchers and the faculty members. Uh, am I audible? Uh, yes, sir. You're audible, sir. Yeah, wonderful. Uh, actually, uh, in my in my uh, <clears throat> technical session, actually the first paper, uh, actually I have presented. I have given that presentation. I have. Uh, uh, you know my paper to be presented but i will do that in the later part of that uh, session so first of all uh, i welcome all the participants over here uh, who are uh, to present their papers so without uh, wasting our time and uh, and time and space we we, uh, we should start this presentations and now uh, the the first one uh, to be presented the first paper uh, which is in my list uh, to be presented by uh, aim sankara uh, PhD scholar and Dr. Y. Vigila uh, Jeva Ruby. Uh, their paper is Reversal of Traditional Gender Roles in Lisha Seas, uh, the Island of Uman. Uh, probably it will be the Island of Sea Uman, a study of an ethnic group of Jeju Island caught between wearing, uh, you know, empires. So, uh, M. Sankara, are you, are, are you here? M. Shankara, PhD scholar, are you here? Dr. Y. Vigila Jeva Ruby, are you here? Oh, okay, uh, they are not there. Uh, so we, we should go for the second one. Uh, we'll be taking because we have some time. Uh, we'll be going for the second one. The second uh, presenter is the Nimisha Yadav, PhD scholar, CLL, the North Cap University, and uh, uh, Shruti Mehta Mehta. Uh, their paper is Poverty, Misery, and Despair, a study of Dominic Lefer, the City of Joy. Nimisha Yadav, are you here? Nimisha Yadav is there because she is muted. Nimisha, are you there? Shruti Mita Mehta, are you there? Nimisha, are you there? Uh, the next one is uh, Fairly Jennifer and Dr. H. Jim C. Asha, and their paper is Post-Colonial Rule as Ingress to Counterculture of Eastern Kiris, a Respectable Woman. Yes, sir. I'm here, sir. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I've been calling the names, other names, they are not responding. Uh, yeah, uh, so the oh. Eastern Kiris, a Respectable Woman. Uh, you proceed with your presentation, please. Okay, sir. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. This my topic is postcolonial rule as ingress to counterculture in Eastern Kaya's a respectable woman. Postcolonial rule creates deep ruckus in the minds of the colonized people. Eastern Kaya, through a respectable woman, records the plights of native people of Nagaland at times of war. The Japanese invasion of India in 1944 finds a key role in the novel A Respectable Woman. This paper attempts to analyze how the Orion perceives the Occident culture under the canopy of war. The audience faced by colonized are passed from one generation to another in the form of memory. Memory plays a vital role in propagating the deep scars of war in the minds of any generation. The memory passes from 
mother to daughter in the form of invoking the past memories of colonial rule and its impact in present day Nagaland. The reminiscence of past predominates the present state of Nagaland. Kaya registers the events which surpass after World War II. Clash of cultures are preceded and the new hybrid culture has entered in the lifestyle of Angami people. The major transformation takes place in the form of conversion. Missionary schools and churches are created to transform the people. The elderly people fail to understand the significance of bail in Christian wedding rituals. A character named Sue's marriage is a combination of both traditional and church wedding. Though the couple gets blessed by pastor and church, but towards the end, they had an elaborate wedding feast in traditional way of Naga culture. Eleki Bohimo in colonial and post-colonial literature defines colonialism as the settlement of territory, the exploitation or development of resources and the attempt to govern the indigenous inhabitants of occupied lands. The Japanese with the entry into the Naga Hills exploited the natural resources of Nagaland. The Japanese forces have constant raids in the village and they planted the food and other natural resources of the people. The race, ethnicity, and culture of the present-day Nagaland have altered due to the invasion of British regime. The in-between state of present-day Nagaland gains much attention in the novel A Respectable Woman. The legacy of British imperialism subjects the people to adopt a new form of culture. The change in power has altered the way of living which existed before the colonial rule. The tribal monarchy gets replaced by the British and Japanese government. The spiritual essence of Angami tribe gets disseminated by the colonizers' new religion. The expropriation practiced by British and Japanese allies make the Angami people to leave their homeland. The people flee from their motherland at times of war and the native land itself becomes an alien land. The colonial rule has led to the modernization of present-day Nagaland. Eurocentricism has led to the universality of British culture. The people get preoccupied with the residues created by war. New bookshops are introduced to Kohima, which are Bibles, hymn books, and calendars for imparting British culture among the colonized. The Eurocentricism practiced by the British people transforms the people of Kohima to believe that the Western education is far better than the traditional education of Nagaland people. The educational system of Nagaland is associated with basic living techniques like herb gathering, hunting, etc. Native language Tenedi gets obliterated and it is replaced by English language. The Daho teaching place of Naga culture gets transformed into the new education system brought out by the missionaries from Britain. The Angami clan system is praiseworthy as it provides alternate solutions for the problems. <clears throat> the continents which prevailed before the invasion of Nagaland has dispersed with the entry of the British. But the new norms which exist after the advent of British has opened way for the prevailing customs to be considered as social taboos. The Naga people try to mimicry the Western culture of Britain and they try to adopt the new culture. The English people under, under the pretext of teaching, baking to girls imparts the language English. Though the girls discontinued their school studies, they couldn't escape the English language which is taught in between baking classes. Kair consciously picks up parallels with the colonial rule and the national consciousness which moves on. The confused state of people dealing with national and state problems makes them fall as a prey to the counterculture of Britain. The technological stagnation of the tribal people witnessed a failure with the entry of other forces. The Angami people with their traditional equipment like dough and spear fail to restrict the entry of foreign intruders like British and Japanese forces. 
So they fall under the mercy of British government when the Japanese try to intrude their area. The intrusion of radio sets have clearly disturbed the peaceful life of elderly people. Major findings, the double colonization of British and Japanese forces is responsible for the fall of traditional culture of Magland. Eurocentric attitude pursued by the British forces is responsible for the entry of counterculture replacing Aboriginal culture. Mimicry and hybridization of Western culture has led to the decline of indigenous culture. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, uh, Jennifer. Uh, it was really a uh, nice presentation, short and crispy. Uh, still, I have some observation on the, on that because uh, this uh, historian Kiris and some others, you know, uh, so writers from the Nagaland, writers from the Northeast, uh, they have suffered uh, probably the, the cultures and uh, the, the Aboriginal culture, the indigenous cultures, they have suffered the same way uh, uh, like the other, uh, something like they have been... Uh, but but problem is that when we talk about the the European Eurocentric mm -hmm. and the post-colonial you know references, uh, and that actually creating a kind of a kind of a uh, kind of a what I can say kind of a uh, cause for destroying the indigenous culture, uh, I have got reservation on that because I, it, though it is actually destroyed, but also it has got modernized. It has also modernized the culture, uh, which is uh, of, of Nagaland and the Michora, Manipur, the Assamese, the, the other part of this, uh, of, of the part of Northeast. But it also creates a kind of a modernism. And if you see that, uh, because uh, I also have written a, a paper on that, I was preparing. So you can find that the memory, which has actually transformed, the, it has got three parts. The memory from the mother, and then it's coming to the next generation, to the daughter, and how the daughter actually uh, is assimilating to the modernized versions of Nagaland, and how she is coping up with these things, and also creating a kind of a national consciousness. So it has started from the memory, it has started from the Kohima war. So, the, uh, it's not only that they are uh, destroying the indigenous culture, the Aboriginal cultures, the tribal, tribal, uh, uh, you know, the tribal monarchy and the tribal uh, setup, but rather it also giving a kind of an opportunity to, uh, you know, to bring a, a kind of a modernized consciousness about Nagaland, and it also, it also creating a kind of a, a linkage of probably a kind of a kind of a bridge to the other part of Indians, Indian Indian state, because. Before that, if you read the novel, you can find that this, the, the people of the Nagaland, they were, you know, finding it difficult to uh, assimilate themselves with the culture of Indian part. Uh, but after the modernizations, after the uh, after they left uh, Nagaland, uh, after the Second World War, after the independence, they they become very easy, it's become very easy to to assimilate with the Indian cultures, and it also helps to influence the other part of the the country with the modernism, the versions of uh, the modernism they had uh, uh, experienced. So this actually is a wonderful uh, presentation and a wonderful uh, observation of yours. Uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, we'll be taking some questions uh, if, if the time permits. But the second one is, uh, M. Sankara, uh, are you there? M. Shankara, where you, sir? Am I audible? Yes, yes. I asked your name, but you were not there. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, I was there, but my, uh, my phone was not working, I think so. Okay, so now, it's, now it's okay? Now it's okay? Uh, okay, sir. Okay, okay so your uh, your presentation is a reversal of traditional gender roles in Alicia C's the island of sea women, probably it's mistakes, a study of an ethnic group of Jeju Island caught between varying empires. Is it okay? Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. I will be presenting, sir. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, good afternoon. My presentation is uh, viewable. 
Am I audible, sir? Yes, yes, it's okay. It's okay. Just make it a full, make it a full form. Thank you, sir. Has my presentation uh, been seen in the screen? Yeah, it is visible. Just make it a full screen. Make it a full screen. Mm. You just go to the slide so you just go to the slide so you just go to the slide so oh, okay, yeah click it so I think full screen is now. Earlier it was there, now it is not, not opening. Yeah, full screen, the option is not open. Sir. Are you presenting with a laptop? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. So uh, don't panic, just, just share the screen, entire screen. Yeah, now it's coming in. Is it so, so? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Oh, okay, sir. So my title is Reversal of Traditional Gender Roles in Lisa Sees the Island of Sea Women, a study of an ethnic group of Jeju Island caught between warring empires. First, let us briefly uh, see about multicultural literature because uh, it falls under multicultural literature genre. Multicultural literature describes how people live in different parts of the world. It presents an accurate representation of the culture it portrays. Multicultural novels are interesting as they take the readers to an incredible journey across exotic new lands and immerse the reader into different cultures. It proves to be universal because humans can relate themselves with that of the protagonist of the stories. Now let us come into the novel. Uh, the writer of the novel is Lisa C. She is an American novelist. Um, her great grandfather was a Chinese, so her novels also deals with the uh, immigrants of China or Korea and so on. Her novel also deals with the relationship of females in both families and societies. Uh, I mentioned few of her, her books On Gold Mountains, uh, Flower Net, Interior, Dragon Bones, Snowflower, and so on. Here we would be concentrating on the novel, The Island of Sea Woman, which was published in 2019. In this novel, Sea Woman, Lisa portrays an unique culture of Jeju Island, which is in South Korea, where reverse gender roles are practiced, thereby make, breaking the stereotype gender notions of society. Now let us see about gender roles in brief. Gender roles are cultural and personal. They determine how males and females should think, speak, dress, and interact within the context of societies. Traditionally, the female role is to be loving, compassionate, caring, nurturing, and sympathetic. The male stereotypic role is to be the financial provider. But contrast to the gender, gender notions followed by our society, uh, the island of sea women explores this matriarchal. Matriarchal means uh, society based on women. Uh, matriarchal culture of Jeju, where women are the breadwinners of the society, family and men take care of household chores. Women go and provide a financial support to the family and men, they nurture children, they take care of home. Um, let us see the history of this Jeju driving, diving tradition. Jeju's diving tradition dates back to 434 AD. Originally, diving was exclusively male profession, with the exception of women who assisted their husband. Several possible explanations exist for this shift. For instance, in the 17th century, a significant number of men died at sea due to war or deep sea fishing accidents, meaning that diving became the work of women. Another explanation is that physiologically, women have more fat and a higher shivering threshold than men, making them more equipped to withstand cold water. This is the reason. Uh, this is the reason why women are um, women are the basic uh, financial provider of the Jeju Island. 
or societies. Now let us see Henyo. Henyo are female divers in Korean province of Jeju whose livelihood consists of harvesting a variety of mollusks, seaweed and other sea life from the ocean. The women divers are called as Henyo. In Jeju Island, other practices are in Jeju Island, goddesses are considered to be superior than gods. Other practices include um, men paying a dowry to the family of a bride and family celebrating the birth of the girls over the birth of the boys. Because traditionally, when your job is handed down from mother to daughter, as a result, daughter are preferred over sons because they can look after their family financially. So, uh, see that women continue to die even through their pregnancy up to the ninth month. Uh, we can also see that women giving birth to their young ones at boats in the sea while they were off work, while they were on the work. Uh, there are also women who continue up to uh, 80 years of their life uh, swimming or diving in the sea for sea products. We can also look at, look at another dimension of their tribe. Shamanism. Shamanism is a spiritual practice found in cultures around the world from ancient times up to the present day. Shamans work in voluntarily ecstatic trance stages which alter their consciousness to travel to the realms of the invisible worlds. Now, the novel also brings out the erased history of Bakon massacre in Jeju Island. In the island of sea women, Lisa C. explores history of Jeju Island spanning the invention of the Mongols, the conquering of Korean kings, the occupation of the Japanese Bakon massacre, and the uprising within the people of Jeju Island. After World War II, Korea was divided between an American-backed government in South and a Soviet-backed one in the North. Jeju Islanders rose up against police brutality and called for a unified Korean group government. She power powerfully captures the chaos of Jeju villages as the conflict around the communism, communism literally sweeps down from the mountain, resulting in the indiscriminate slaughter of innocents known as Bakon Massacre. During, during Bakon Massacre, Jeju was a human slaughterhouse with an estimated 30,000 people losing their lives, about one-tenth of the island population killed by police, soldiers, and anti-communists. Widows and mothers of sons who had been killed often went mad and threw themselves off cliffs, sailing to their loved ones in the afterworld. In one village, the girls were kidnapped, gang-raped for two weeks, and then executed along with all the young men from that village. These were the physical tortures of the war. Let us see about the mental health during the war. Among the consequences of war, the mental health of the civilian population is one of the most significant. War destroys communities and families. Lisa C. explores a deep friendship and what war and trauma bring to their friendship. The novel deals with the two major characters, Yansuk and Maija. They are Henyo. They dive and work together. Throughout the novel, we can see that Maija carries the burden of being a daughter of Japanese collaborator and being a wife of the supporter of police. We can see their friendship diminishing to a point where each other stand against each other uh, in a phase of history. It deals with how difficult forgiveness can be and how they deal with it going forward. So at last we can conclude that Lisa C. in the island of sea women swiftly portrays the friendship of two Hainyo, the progress of their friendship set against the backdrop of war and the impact of war on the friendship and the reconciliation. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for that uh, uh, brief presentation. Uh, I was expecting that it would be quite long because uh, it has got several issues. Uh, the island of Sea Woman. It en encompasses both World War Two, Korean War, uh, the, the communism, uh, you know, the, the political rebellion and the civil war, 
the chaos and the confusion, the, the cultural conflict uh, among the Jeju villages um, and the Bukon massacre. Uh, there, there is several, it's all about probably the, uh, I have gone through that novel and uh, probably 110 pages. It, it all, 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 um, you know, narrating the, uh, the, the tragedy, um, you know, it was there. Yeah. Narrated the history through the friendship of Yansu and Maija. Yeah, 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 I understand that. I understand that. Uh, probably in uh, in the next uh, way, I would be uh, looking forward to, uh, you know, reading a historical point of view. And there are several narratives out there. You know, there are several narratives out there. But yeah, uh, in a in a nutshell, your presentation is highly valuable. Uh, those who haven't read that novel, please suggest that to read read that novel because it has. Uh, uh, it, it it is a storehouse of several cultures, several several things, several historical details, and that we should understand. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, the next one is uh, the one who was actually left out. That is Nimisha Yadav. Are you there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm there. I'm so sorry. I had some network issues. That's yeah. why I couldn't respond. I yeah, just that. Thing. Yeah, that actually happened. So, so you please go ahead of your or your presentation. I hope my screen is visible. Yeah, it is visible now. Okay, fine. Got. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I am Nimisha Yadav, a PhD scholar from the North Cap University, Gurugram. And today, the topic for my presentation is poverty, misery, and despair: a study of Dominic Lepers, the city of joy. Cities, they are multidimensional. They have the good, the bad, and the ugly intricately woven into fabrics. They have emerged as the hopes for people searching for opportunities and liberation, where they lure masses towards a new world full of prospects and aspiration. The city life not only includes the vibrance and exuberance, rather, it also includes the life of people living in slums and back streets, which stands in contrast to urban life. Cities which are hopes are uh, which are hopes and dreams are not touched by disasters. They include pollution, thefts, robbery, poverty, etc. People they come with hopes and desires into the city, but they encounter a lot of challenges. Migration to the city with the hope of a good uh, migration to this romance. Migration to the city with the hope of a good job, becoming successful, turns out to be the dream of every individual. But to enlighten that dream, an individual has to face challenges with enthusiasm, passion, and zest. The migration from villages to the cities is not only for a better environment, better opportunities, but also to improve the economic condition of the family. People, they migrate for better conditions, which is not a new concept. Rather, it has been dominant in our society for many years. People, they leave behind their families and relocate to improve their future. They are pulled into the city by the opportunities and prospects of job. The intricacies faced in the city, they can only be expounded by people who migrate and settle into the city. There are a lot of writers who have elaborated on migration. And these writers, they accentuate people migrating to Delhi, Calcutta, Bombay, or any other city. By highlighting the city, the foremost effort is to bring forth the reality of the city. There is a conception or belief of an outsider of the city. The city appears full of attachment, friendship, music, and affection. But when the city is looked by an insider, the city is filled with social reality, such as poverty, shortage of food, diseases, etc. So the author that I am, I will be focusing on is Dominic Lepere. Dominic Lepere, he is a French author. He is known for travel writing, literary journalism, and historical nonfiction. He, uh, his work, which was uh, which attained great uh, success, was is Paris Burning, which was later adapted into a film. Another book which adapted uh, achieved greater success was The City of Joy, which is uh, actually now a movie also. Uh, in this movie, Lepere, he highlights the Indian poor and subcontinent humanitarian issues. He is um, the movie, uh, the novel was first. It was printed into French as La Sight de la Joie. It was uh, published in 1985. And then the book uh, was translated in the same year in English. The book has received Christopher Award in 1986. Uh, Lepere, he highlights, uh, highly he is highly appreciated for his, uh, for his book. And he claims to have received many more 20,000 letters from the readers expressing their love and enthusiasm for the book. 
in this novel he gives a realistic presentation of men and women living in the city by presenting their everyday situations although his novels they are uh, diverse in themes his primary focus is on the characters that are ex exquisitely uh, portrayed and analyzed through his works the novel uh, the city of joy the primary objective of my paper is the paper attempts to highlight the migration migration into the city analyze the social reality of living in the city by critically analyzing the city of joy by Don dominic lepere the novel uh, presents a picture of poverty hunger suffering disease of all the people living in calcutta although the slums of the city have been represented perfectly the novel depicts an outsider's view the novel features an indian and european protagonist hasari pal he is a bengali peasant who turned into a rishawala in calcutta and stephen kowalski who was a priest a uh, polish priest who fulfilled his spiritual calling to serve the poor the novel revolves around experiences of a young american do doctor max loeb and bandona the beautiful assamese girls and many other people who face the harsh realities of slum life for hasari pal and his extended family was not easy in calcutta the novel it brings separation of family from the poor and separation of different levels of poverty migration is uh, migration refers to moving from one country place or locality to other this movement to other country or cities might be for better job for better living and for better future for their children or any other reason so there is a push and a pull uh, theory by ravenstein according to the push pull model of ravenstein every migrant experiences a push from his land and a pulling force into the direction of the destination the model generated uh, generally it detects various financial environmental and demographic aspects which are presumed to push migrants out of the location of origin and tempt them into the target location uh, in the novel for the character hasari pal he is forced to leave his village and move to the city the push for for hasari pal was the job his uh, he and his extended family they are introduced as peasants who were bankrupted by successive droughts and famines the push force was the nastiest condition in the village where the family was having no food no water and no harvest the situation was becoming very un unpleasant and terrible with each passing day so in the story hasari's father recommends him to leave the city and he says i quote you my eldest son take this money and go with your wife and children to calcutta in the big city you will find work you will send us whatever you can you are our only hope of not dying of starvation quote unquote due to the stressful economic condition the family was forced to migrate to calcutta for a job and a better living his ancestral place place sari uh, pal brings his wife and children to calcutta to find work in calcutta he joins thousands of other unlucky family who stray to the same situation of uh, finding better jobs better condition the high hopes of calcutta were shattered when he stepped into the uh, city he uh, has he had a belief that uh, calcutta life in calcutta would be easy that belief was from an outsider when he was not when he didn't come into the city but that belief was shattered when he moved into the city he realized that the city is full of social reality he was having no food he was having no money he was uh, people were suffering from diseases so that uh, notion was uh, that belief of an outsider became uh, shattered only when he stepped into the city in his initial days he could not bring anything with uh, to his family except bananas for his family economically it was tough for the family to survive and they decided to send their children two brothers and a little girl to take the position where rich travelers got out of their taxis and private cars so that they could beg life uh, was not easy and it became more difficult when he uh, started uh, you know when he was living his urban living was denuded with all trappings he saw millions of people they this that the city is inhuman his first job in hasari a coolie vomits blood which gives uh, pal a tough lesson for life the economic condition was so worse that he could not uh, the only thing accounts for the separation of the wealth from the poor but also separation of different levels of poverty he could see that people were having uh, no food he was suffering from shortage of food he was not having any place to live they were not having any clothes so uh, the economic condition could be discussed when we talk about poverty j miller in his theory he discusses uh, uh, that 
uh, the continuing trend in continuing trends in rising poverty he says and explains poverty and says that men who are in inexperienced and low paid jobs they are most hemp, helpless to joblessness and young person they cannot get protected grasp on labor market asari pal he was an Uh, he was inexperienced and he had low paid jobs so people they took uh, the poor people and all the migrants who uh, migrated into the city all of them they took low paid jobs which resulted in bad condition of their families having no food having no shelter to live um the the, the pe- people they were tossing between unemployment low paid jobs for the starters the uh, family suffered from shortage of food deplorable living condition hasari he started uh, working but he sent his kids to beg for food they were forced to make money from to take money from uh, people where the rich travelers came only uh, out of many families only a few had one or two rupees from which they could even buy food the city was not only uh, people were not only having uh, no money to buy food but it was full of diseases uh, such as hepatitis typhoid rabies cholera and it became calcutta city became a dying city for the poor people the belief that was uh, the belief for pal was shattered but he also saw the real calcutta he had discovered that individuals they can die on the streets surrounded by seeming indifference people they started uh, saying that even slogans on the wall proclaimed the disastrous state of the city they said that there is no hope all of that is left is anger calcutta city was known uh, is known as the homeland of famous philosophers poets storytellers musicians and to these highly acclaimed figures the culture continued to be alive but the culture the history or magnitude had nothing to do with the poor the poor people they had only challenges that they had to face he had to send uh, he had uh, you know he had no food no roof uh, when he moved into the city hasari he lo- lost a lot of weight his bones were protruding he had uh, two deep cracks and his hair turned gray gradually uh, he moved initial days he had no place to live but gradually he moved to the slum area which was more a uh, poverty stricken industrial suburb people in uh, slum stay were having a uh, shortage of work low wages child labor was present and the city of joy which was uh, which seemed as a city which is full of joy was a place where most dangerous financial deficiency ran like uh people in slums they had no food no electricity the city was nothing but a polluted marsh he himself had to sell his own skeleton to raise money for her daughter's amrita's marriage his decision to sell his bones represented the immoral exploitation of poor and dying men these characters they worked hard to survive despite of all the exploitation and discrimination it was only the poor who stood for each other in tough times the christian protagonist which was the only humble man, no, holy man who cared for pal and his family he offered him free medical care and recovery from his illness now these poor people for them uh, what separated them from the high class was the rickshaw they were they used to uh, only means of survival for them was rickshaw for migrants refugees peasants the rickshaw was the only means of survival but many of these refugees they were illegally operating these rickshaws and they were exploited by the police forces on the transport ministry the writer he also dwells on the rampant corruption by the government of people through these characters the author he implies that life in calcutta for poor people was hard hitting filled with death filth and misery in the end i would like to conclude that for hasari and all the other refugees life in calcutta was not easy they tried their best to survive in inhuman conditions and earn a living they came to the city with the notion that life would be easy sufferable but they fe- uh, faced the world's unimaginable suffering they met dis- uh, destitute they uh, miserable slum dwellers they were more uh, most cruelly stricken by poverty dominic lepair he focuses on poor people living in slum and cruelty surrounding by them the poor uh, the book it also raises a question the question being is calcutta an inhuman city or not but this question is answered beautifully by portraying the life of hazari pal and other slum dwellers thank you yeah uh, thank you uh, uh, nimisha it was a wonderful presentation and uh, i may add something to that uh, yes, you know bh naipal uh, you have gone through that Uh, B. S. Naipaul actually once said that the city of Kolkata is dying. There was Rudyard Kipling. They also told um, that uh, it's the white wicked 
you know, place in the art uh, about Kolkata. There is another person uh, there, which is, uh, the name is uh, Amit Chaudhary, you know this. Uh, and uh, he wrote about Kolkata in a different, in a different way, in a, in a very positive way, uh, non-fiction. Yes. And there is an, another author and a director, uh, that is Kunal Bosu. Kunal Bosu yes. wrote uh, a novel named Calcutta. Calcutta. Yes. yes. So, uh, you know, I don't, I don't uh, find, you know, I, I know that, that, uh, that uh, the, how the, how the presentations are going on, how the uh, narration, narrations is going on for, for a city, for or when you are placing a city, um, when, uh, for, for a setting of a novel, uh, there, are, there must be everything, everywhere, if you go, you can find the reality. If you, if you go, even Paris, if you go to London, if you go to the America, even if you go to the, any parts of India, you can find that uh, when you're living there, you can, you have to find out that some, some, some hardships are there, some, um, some sufferings are there. Everywhere there is a goodness and yeah. there is a badness. So it should not be, we should not generalize it. Is it okay? So there are some writers, there are, uh, you know, Dominic Le, uh, um, is there. Uh, he's from uh, France and uh, B.S. Apple is also there. That there, there is a Rudyard Kipling is also there. They, they have got some uh, very negative perspective of, of, of Kolkata. Which is somewhat right. Which is somewhat right. I'm not denying it because it's a reality. It's a crude reality. Fine. And uh, but at the same time, but at the same time, as a researcher, uh, we need to understand that everywhere you can find this reality. It's not an utopian world. Is it okay? Yes. And when you are yes, Nimisha. And when you are moving from one place to the another, my dear, when you are migrating from one home to the another, and uh, obviously you will be feeling displaced. You will be, uh, you will be, you will be getting difficult to to adopt that situation to to, to that posture. And, and therefore, there are several novels are there on based on the cities. They probably portray the same problems, same problems. Is it okay? So uh, wonderful presentations, uh, wonderful Nimisha. Uh, you have presented the novel in a brilliant way. Uh, I may I may suggest to you that please, uh, you, if you uh, have, if you do not read that, if you haven't gone through that novel, Kunal Basu's Calcutta, please read it. And yes, sir, I have read it. Oh, I've read one, it. Sir. Wonderful. Yes. So make make it a, make it a comparison, make it a comparative analysis, and write a, write down a paper uh, article and publish it in a very good uh, journal. So it will be wonderful presentations. It will be great. Thank one. you, sir. Yeah, wonderful. Yes, thank you thank so you, much. Sir. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, so we have uh, we have. Uh, uh, completed the four uh, presentations. If you if you have any questions uh, regarding the papers, uh, please uh, you know uh, the house is open for uh, the discussions. If anybody has got some problems, if anybody has got some question uh, from the audience, okay. I guess it is not there. So um, I'm just uh, b handing this, uh, handing over this uh, platform to the authority, to the admin uh, for the next session. Thank you very much for giving me the chance to share the sessions. Brilliant papers are there. They have presented well and uh, they have presented in a diverse context. So it was um, good to good to be associated with this, uh, with this trust and with, with Regan sir. And uh, it was wonderful. Thank you.